responsibility of our generation is that this is a world we're going to have to live with. This is something that we have to do. We can't wait much longer. Climate and sustainability are important to me because I hit a breaking point in the summer of 2020 when my home state of California was on fire. Where I come from, not a lot of people are educated in regards to learning about sustainability, so that's why I kind of want to learn as much as I can. The whole climate change problem was just getting to be really big, and I wanted to be part of the solution. I can do this, you know, even if I'm just one person, I can do this, I can make a difference. The earth has already given us so much, and it just feels nice to be able to be out there and like give a little bit back of the so much we've taken. A lot of our energy is not really cleanly sourced and comes from fossil fuels. So as the world and the U.S. in general just transitions towards renewable energy, um, I think it's important we do that on a local level. The number one objective of the project that we're doing is to produce and distribute solar panels for um, almost a no cost to, to those communities that really need it. The idea is to keep everything in one big cycle, have panels made by people from the community with money from the community to create these panels which stay within the community. I was focused on uh, looking at alternatives for water capture in the Sepulveda Basin. Um, and one of the things that one can do is removing um, the, some of the concrete and just allowing natural soil around uh, the channel, the river channel. A major part of the LA River that, um, you know, we boarded it up, we cemented it up, and you know, all it does is really divert the water towards the ocean. And I realized that there is gonna be 2,500 tons of trash that is um, coming down the LA River. And what happens is that trash that goes down the LA River, that ends up here in Long Beach because of that breakwater. It was honestly scary to see how much we use and everything from the trash bag that we put our waste in and how we get it to, to the landfill. Like everything just started to add up for me and I was like, we need to change the way that we consume. Within a, a mile of this campus, uh, are many wetlands with lots of uh, endangered birds, uh, other species, and it's also important cultural uh, land for the Tongva indigenous culture. So our expectations is really to just develop more of an engaged citizenry. So that may look like coming to visit the lagoon, swimming, going on walks, observing nature. The natural world and vegetation is something that is unfortunately taken for granted and we want to do something better and make it a, a more peaceful, more appreciating place to be. I think some of the big problems that this project is addressing is how there's very little public spaces, especially for um, impoverished communities or communities of color like Watts. It'll help make able the space to be improved and cleaned up so that there's beautiful landscaping, places to walk, water features. That's, that's what I imagine for the space. The design piece that I created for the Watts Healing Garden is a gate um, that is a portal in the shape of an artichoke flower for those who are visiting the garden to have a moment where they can step through a threshold. And this particular plant is known as a healing plant, a healing food that helps us open our hearts. The problem we seek to address is car dependence and that the landscape in Los Angeles is completely dominated by car-centric infrastructure. Our vision aims to repurpose spaces owned by the car. This is a perfect time to explore mobility solutions because there's a, right now there's a transition happening from gasoline vehicles to electric vehicles. So this would be the right time to explore other options as well. I think if we can understand how to teach climate change to people who may think it's a touchy subject, if we can communicate that well in a way that isn't biased or hurtful, I think it could really go a long way in helping us fight climate change around the globe.
sustainability not only as like respect to nature or the environment or the natural environment, but also to social and economic environments that exist. I think sustainability works in so many manners and one change in one realm can make such a large ripple effect in so many other realms. What sustainability means to product design is really rethinking the way that we manufacture products and incorporating sustainable methods in each step of the product design process. I think the biggest challenge is to like transform your mindset from just looking at things from a, like a pure aesthetic perspective to like really seeing are they sustainable, are they like um, creating impact on like the environment more than they should. Sustainability in a sense is not only environmental, but it's also sustainability of relationships and sustainability of a community that can work. You're helping contribute to ide an identity that you can be proud of and one that you feel truly represents you and that you're, you're heard and seen in that community. Sustainability has three E's, the economy, environment, and equity. But disability, I would say, is like 50% or more of the equity equation because it affects everyone. It's about equality, it's about access, it's about health, you know. We are trying to uh, design our projects uh, according to the, the sustainable goals. And I think making those connections is really important and to understand that climate change and sustainability isn't just about recycling and composting. It involves issues of social justice and injustices that are happening all around the world. How can we include uh, you know, issues of environmental justice and equity into the conversation? Because right now, um, you know, sustainability and resilience is, is not just a buzzword, it's much more of like a moral imperative, right? Being a part of Pando Days show that there's so many other initiatives being taken um, in di very different ways to help the LA community. And it showed that it's not a small thing at all. It's, there's so much more to it. By having our image and our message spread to other people in LA County that would be interested in it, really helped ease some of the conversations that we need to start in these communities. It provided us with more connections and gave us an inroad to areas that we might not have normally had. It was helpful in the sense that Pando gave us um, sustainability goals and basically tenets that we should be uh, modeling our experience around. I really enjoyed that we were able to um, focus on a big problem. Um, and even, how, even though um, our solution may be as small as educating people, that's a, a place to start. It'll benefit the community, the environment, the people who are there. And so that enables me to have a sense of purpose that I can share with others. Landscape and sustainability have big factors on, on the environment. And so I want low income children to grow up with better a better environment and community for themselves, something I didn't really have while growing up. I want them to feel safe, to feel proud that some, this represents us, right? This is who we are. We are beauty. We are, you know, wonderful people. We are imaginative. We are alive, right? We are somebody. We, we, are, we are here. It's good to see people happy and I can help them for better life. Yeah, I think it, it brought me a lot of hope that people are excited about the future and, and about open spaces in a way. I hope that the Sepulveda Basin can act as a catalyst for community change, community events, uh, for people to, to just go walk in the park. This restoration project that we did is pretty much exactly what I want to be doing in the future. I want to be able to do more of this in a wide variety of places. I want to be able to uh, go to very different places and just look at them and be like, I helped fix this area, restore this area, and just feel that connection to the earth. I'm really passionate about 
making sustainable buildings that are environmentally friendly and also help with poverty or um, mental health. We're moving towards that, you know, um, way of architecture. Instead of building new buildings, we're going to be repurposing uh, buildings for the user itself. So I feel like that is kind of like a path of something I want to do in the future. I would like to tell my future kids that I played an instrumental role in developing the energy source that is now powering the house that they live in, it is powering the cars that they drive, and powering the schools that they go to. For the future, for the future of our kids, for the future for our planet, and I guess everybody should be responsible for the planet. When I think about my future, I know that I want to have all the opportunities of the generations before me, and we can do that and better. I've never had an experience like this in my life. Through all my education, I really never have had an experience of being able to, in a school or a learning setting, have this immediate kind of impact.